It's snowing. Means winter content. What should I talk about? What does this snow inspire me to talk about? Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. What can it be? What can it be? Sometimes I still see people asking and wondering about whether Christmas is specifically a Christian holiday or a pagan holiday. It's both, guys. It's just both. I mean, Jesus wasn't literally born on December 25th, but in the Christian Bible, he's known as the light that entered the world. And Yuletide used to be about celebrating the light being born into the world in the depths of winter, where it would grow up and come into its fullness in the summer. So in the conversion of European peoples, and as well just for cultural communication of what Jesus was to Christians, it made sense to them to shift the date to Yuletide for Jesus' birth. One thing seemingly every group agrees on, though, is that Christmas is about light. It's about bringing a little bit of light into the darkest time of the year. Hopefully we all agree it's about being kinder to one another, being a little more giving, a little more generous, and yeah, just kind of being cheery, being positive. So string up some lights, maybe get yourself a tree, whether you call it a Yule tree or a Christmas tree, whether it represents Jesus' birth or, you know, other things. Have a good time, man. I mean, we live in this, like, modern, depressed, nihilistic era, and I get that, and I get that com companies and different entities try and turn Christmas into a uh, canned holiday that you can put on a shelf, and it's just about items and consuming. It's not about consuming, okay? Think about someone who means a lot to you and give them something that will mean a lot to them. Do any of you have, um, like, items from your childhood or something you got for Christmas that's not like a TV or an iPod or an iPhone or whatever? Something that is, is an item, a very specific thing that you can hold on to. I think those are the best gifts by far, because you're giving the gift of treasure. Um, an iPhone's an iPhone, it'll get obsolete, it'll break. But something that is that showed that that person cares about you, a, a personal touch, it really goes a long way. For me, an example of this, something very sentimental to me, and the person who gave it to me probably didn't even realize how sen sentimental it would be, is uh, this rosary. So. I'm not a Roman Catholic, but um, I was living with a really nice couple um, years back, renting a room from them, and it was out in the country, it was a farmhouse, learned a lot from them, got to uh, watch the process of raising and slaughtering animals, all that stuff, kind of see the farm life. And um, the, the woman in the couple, the, the girl, I just don't want to use names, you know, but I guess I'll just call her uh, Lisa for the sake of this video. Lisa and I had some really good conversations about um, Catholicism and the church because, as I've mentioned, it's a scholarly interest of mine. It's something I really enjoy learning about. And I told her just how much I love the tactility and um, the idea of rosaries and prayer beads, like what they represent, how old they are, and kind of uh, the different spiritualities and uh, movements that have emerged around them. And she got me a rosary from a nunnery, which is the best smelling thing I've ever smelled in my entire life. It smells like sandalwood, and it's made of sandalwood. I don't know, though, if the smell that's coming off of it is from the um, from the wood itself or what, but it just smells heavenly, and it's got a little bit of water from Portugal in the uh, locket there from Fatima. I don't know what she thought when she was giving me this. She went to the nunnery herself, and the nun gave it to her, and to me, that's it's just kind of priceless now because it smells amazing. Um, it was a gift with me in mind. I could go buy nicer rosaries, right? I have the funds, I have the means, I can go buy some like bejeweled, crazy situation. But it wouldn't mean much. It really wouldn't. This means so much to me. So, thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I was reminded of a story when I was a kid. Uh, we had, uh, during a year, had our house broken into, and they actually did it shortly after Christmas, and they took our Xbox, took took all of our Christmas presents, essentially, uh, my brother and mine. And we were devastated. So for most of that year, we didn't really have much of anything, <laughs> much of anything in the way of at-home entertainment um, for kids. Because my dad didn't make a ton of money at the time, and uh, so that was a big loss. Now, a little later in the year, my dad actually surprised us by replacing the Xbox 360. Um, Xbox around that time had come out with cheaper models because they were starting to phase it out and so we were elated 
And the first game you got me was my favorite game, probably my favorite game of all time to this day, which is the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. At the time it was the current Elder Scrolls. And man, that thing was sick. And I, I just like lived in that game. But my dad, being an attentive, kind, and caring guy, also remembered that before the break-in, I was playing a game called Fallout 3, which is another game by the same company. What he didn't know was I was terrified of that game as a kid. Uh, he saw me playing it once or twice, but I would, I would, I didn't get very far. I don't know why the world, the setting, the ghouls, the radiation, the creepiness of it. When I was like around 10 years old, it just, it just wasn't it, Chief. So, um, anyways, he didn't know that. And then the next Christmas, uh, after the break-in and everything, so we now have our replaced Xbox, and you know it's time to start rebuilding the library. My big present, as in not big physically, but the expensive one for me, was this little game-shaped wrapping with a bow on it, and my dad looked really happy. This is one of my saddest Christmas memories. I fully regret this, by the way, and this is the only time I acted like this, but I picked it up, he's looking at me, I unwrapped it, and I see the Fallout 3 cover, and I remember getting hit with this, like, scary <laughs> feeling. Like, oh no, because I knew that because it's a gift, I have to play it. <laughs> you know, you can't just not <laughs> check it out. And so I just looked at him and I'm like, why did you get me this? <laughs> what? <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> I regret that. And I've told my dad since as an adult that I, uh, I regret that and he forgives me, but... <laughs> I really didn't want to have to fight those ghouls. Now, this is a lesson as an adult in how kids are because... That was a mistake and I fully regretted it, so don't think if your kid says something like that that they necessarily necessarily are, are stuck up. And then have, I've immediately felt bad, and I so I got into the game that week and I loved it. <laughs> you know, Fallout 3 was great. Once I like uh, nutted up a bit and was like, okay, dude, they're fake. The ghouls aren't real, okay? The radiation's not real. Just explore the world. It's made by the same people who made Oblivion. It can't be that bad. And it was sick. So thank you, Dad. <laughs> and sorry. 